My name is David Kern, and I'm the founder and CEO of, of Generex Biotherapeutics. And what our company does is develop novel approaches to cancer treatment. And the way we do that is we actually engineer viruses, which can sometimes cause human disease, and we re-engineer them so they specifically attack cancer cells, uh, but don't affect normal cells. So in that way, we can come up with a therapy that's very targeted at cancer cells while having very few side effects. Most people are familiar with viruses as things that cause illnesses, you know, colds, flu, that sort of thing. There are reports in the medical literature of, of people back at the turn of the century, for example, who had cancer, who got a viral infection, and their cancer resolved. Generally not cured, but the cancer, there was a significant remission that lasted for some number of months, and then eventually, uh, typically, the cancer would return. But that sort of indicated to people, boy, maybe viruses have a chance to be effective against cancer. The idea has been around for a long time, but it wasn't until the early 90s that we had the understanding of cancer genetics, the understanding of how the virus works, the technology to be able to engineer the virus to make it safer, that we could put all this together to now make a, a product that really could make a difference for cancer patients. What we've really done is, what an oncolytic virus is, is it's an engineered virus that's engineered in a way that it, it cripples it and really prevents it from causing any disease or any toxicity in normal tissues. Um, but it's something that when it gets into a cancer cell, it becomes activated and it can amplify itself and replicate and make many, many copies of itself and then burst the cancer cell from the inside out. Those newly produced viral products can then go and attack adjacent cancer cells uh, locally and even at a distance in the body. So it's a self-amplifying product specifically in cancer cells but with really no effect on the normal cells so the side effects are extremely minimal. The way we do that is dependent on a couple of things. First of all, cancers are inherently susceptible to viral attack. So one of the things that happens as a cell becomes a cancer cell is it loses all of those defenses that cells normally have against viruses. So it's one of the interesting things in the evolution of cancers. They actually, as they evolve, they open themselves up to attack by viruses. The way this is engineered is, is not only do we get the, the viral attack, but we induce the immune response and we express um, a protein from the virus that trains the immune response to specifically attack the cancer, so something called GMCSF. It's, a, it's something that your body normally produces itself, but in very small quantities. And what we do is we overproduce it in the cancer specifically. So when all those inflammatory immune cells from your own body come in, they see this GMCSF that says they, they should now train themselves to attack the cancers. What we really do is we set up this cascade where the viral replication leads to cell death in the tumor destruction brings in the immune response and then all of that together shuts off the blood supply as well. So the cancer's getting attacked by multiple routes simultaneously, which makes it a lot harder for it to escape and get around the therapy. Now at the same time, we can also ratchet down the potency of the virus and really inactivate it in normal tissues by engineering it in a way that it can't replicate in normal cells. So it's really understanding cancers and how they form and progress, understanding um, viruses and how they work, and putting those together to engineer a smart virus that targets specifically the cancer cell but not the normal, the normal cells in the body. Certainly, pediatric cancers have many of the same genetic changes um, that we like to have in cancer to attack it. So I think they're very likely to respond. But there are other factors that make uh, pediatric patients perhaps even more likely to benefit from this sort of approach. Their immune systems tend to be very, very robust. They're not uh, diminished with age or diminished with prior treatments uh, typically. So we hope that actually pediatric patients would be uh, able to benefit as, as much or even more than adult patients. It's important to remember that we're starting with something that's got a long safety track record. It's been in lots of people, not even cancer patients, but normal people, uh, safely. And now we've just engineered to make it even safer. We've had patients who've lived a lot longer than their doctors or they had ever hoped they would. That's an important thing to show. It's one thing to show it in the lab, but sometimes when you move to humans, it doesn't translate. In this case, it's, it's translated 100%. And I think we're going to enter a real era here where we can apply that science to come up with 
rationally designed, uh, innovative therapies that will really uh, eventually cure cancer. I mean, that day is coming.